Hi Francis, welcome to your acute care station. Hello there. Um, could you please perform an uh, assessment on this acutely unwell patient who's just come back from theatre, please? Oh, do we have a patient name? Yeah, it says John Smith. John Smith. Okay, I'm assuming it's safe to approach. Yes. I'm going to wash my hands and put on all the necessary personal protective equipment. Okay. Mr Smith, my name's Francis Pearson and I'm one of the medical doctors. How are you feeling today? Oh, not very well, to be honest. Okay. Can you tell me about what's causing you to be unwell today? So I've just got really bad pain. Okay. Whereabouts is that pain? It's been all over since my operation. He, but He's talking to me, so his airway is patent, so I'm happy with that. Yeah. But it's an acutely unwell patient, so let's pop on some oxygen while we're waiting to do our further assessment. 15 litres, non-rebreather reservoir bag attached. We'll pop this on to him. And now I want to go move on to breathing and assess the efficiency of his breathing. So, John, I'm just going to make an assessment. Please do let me know if you are you know, feeling particularly poorly. I'll see what I can do. How's his, uh, um, the expansion on the chest? So it's equal and bilateral. Okay. Is it the same on the back of the chest? Um, we don't know. We haven't assessed that yet. But continue okay. assessing the front. Okay. What about if I percuss? Resonant. Resonant. On both sides? Uh, both Across sides, even yeah. in, the, in the sides of the chest as well? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, and how about if I assess the uh, on auscultation note? Is it sounding equal on both sides? Yep, air entry equal, vesicular, bilaterally. And what's his respiratory rate? Um, at 12. Okay, is there any signs of any accessory muscle use? No. Okay, what about his trachea? Is it central? It is, yes. Okay, so he's got a reasonable respiratory rate, good air entry on the front. I could lift him up and do the same on the back. No, 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 that's fine. Okay, so is it the same on the back? Yeah, we will assess it, but I'm examining you on the front. Okay, just on the front. In which case, I want to see the efficiency of breathing, so I'll turn on my pulse oximeter, and we'll have a look and see what his oxygen saturations are. How are you doing there, Mr. Smith? He's not actually responding to you. Right, so something's changed. Okay, let's come back. Back to airway. Is his airway still patent? Well, there's added sounds and there's a sort of gurgling. Okay. He's not really... Right, um, I need some suction. I don't have an actual tube. I would call this a suction tube. Yeah, we'll fine. Get, suck out the, any secretions that I can see. Okay, yeah, that helps temporarily. Any foreign body in the mouth at all? No. Okay. What about if I do a manoeuvre? So I'll do a head tilt and a chin lift. Does that change things? Yeah, that improves things. What about if I let That's go? Fine. Does it get worse? Um, Yes, so okay. you need, you can't, right. it's a temporary measure. Ideally I need some help here, so I'm going to call for help because he's now lost his airway. Okay. I want to try and measure up and see what size of an oropharyngeal airway can help in the meantime so we don't have to have, keep him in a manoeuvre. Yep. I'm assuming there's been no C-spine injury, no rheumatoid arthritis. That hasn't, that. it's safe to proceed. Okay, so I'm going to be measuring from the angle of the incisors to the angle of the mandible. This actually looks to be about the right size. Put it in inverted and twist. Yeah. Is he tolerating that? He is, yeah. That's a bad sign. Okay, so you put the airway oxygen back on. How's his airway now? Do we happy that there's no more noises? It's maintained, yeah. Back onto breathing then. Is mm -hmm. he still breathing at 12 beats per minute? No, per it's gone down. Okay, what's it gone down to? About 10. 10, okay, Eight. so I'm wondering why he's gone down to 10 beats per minute. Um, I'll come on to that shortly, but we can uh, move on to see circulation, see the impact there, his pulse. Uh, 70. The 70 par parameters. Blood pressure. I uh, will get that for you in a sec. Okay. What about his capillary refill centrally and peripherally? Yeah, peripherally it's not. It's it's delayed three okay. to four seconds. Centrally it's fine. Okay. Uh, and has he got cold sort of peripheries and legs mottling at all? Need to have a look. Any mottling at all in his legs? Any cold peripheries? His peripheral pulses are there. Okay. Peripheral pulses are there, but distally the capillary fill time is reduced. Okay, if I get some extra help, it would be nice to have a catheter set up because that would give us an hourly urine output as well. Okay. Let's get some through leaf monitoring on this gentleman if we can. Okay. Um, so, uh, he's got, as far as I can tell, he has a fair-ish um, pulse. His blood pressure we're still pending on. Yeah. We'll go on to, to our disability. We'll get this set up when we get some extra hands. How about his eyes and pupils? What do they look like? So they are reactive, but they're, the pupils are pinpoint. Right, okay. What, do we have a drugs chart? They're both pinpoint? Yes. Okay, that does make me think about whether he might have had some opiates in the past as well. Well, he's post-op. 
Okay. This is a gentleman post-op complaining of pain. So do we know if he's had opiates recently? He has, yes. In which case we definitely... And he's an opiate naive patient. Right, well, we need to get him some naloxone. I'd like 400 micrograms of naloxone to be given intramuscular. We can give it IV, actually, okay. if we've got an access. So this patient is post-op, and yes, you're right, he's got an access. Okay. So could you tell so me we'll, how you'd prescribe that, please? Well, I want to... Get, basically, I'd like to get him two large bore access because he's got airway compromise, he's, he's got uh, some respiratory compromise. So we'll get two large bore access, we'll send off some routine bloods, presumably he might have had some pre-op, group and save and cross match as part of that, but also full blood count clotting using these CRP, maybe some blood cultures as well. Mm -hmm. And once I've got that in place, I'm gonna flush it with a good 10 mils both sides. Yep. Make sure we have a bag trickling onto one side, so if we need to give a flush, we can. And yep. I'm gonna give 400 micrograms of naloxone stat okay. and res uh, reassess his respiratory effort and see if there's been any change to his pupillary responses. Okay, fine. So we'll assume we've given the naloxone. Okay. Um, could you please start your assessment? Okay, again? so we've given 400 micrograms of naloxone to Mr. Smith, who's the first operative patient. Let's go and have a look at his airway. Is he still tolerating the Goodell? Uh, not as much, not as well as he was. He's kind of wanting to try and spit it out. Okay, really. he's I not liking it. To choke. So let's take this out. Is he still okay without an airway? Yes. Okay, so that's all right because otherwise we could go for a nasopharyngeal as an interim measure. But if he's tolerating and breathing all right without it, mm -hmm. let's just go back onto his breathing. But he got a decent air entry on both sides, the expansion on both sides is all right, there's been mm -hmm. no change to that side. And his, um, his oxygen saturations, have they picked up at all, have they changed at all? Yes, they have. So he's, he's recovered, okay. okay, but he's complaining of pain massively now. Okay. He's a post-op patient, he's had uh, laparotomy, he's not in a well way. In fact, he's actually mm. getting quite upset by that pain. It's going to be difficult because we can't give him more opiates given he's just had an overdose effectively. We could give him some probably paracetamol and I might get the anaesthetist down to see if there are other uh, non-depressant uh, style medications that might need some expert guidance, uh, perhaps even expert things such as ketamine, which can be a bit more cardiorespiratory stable, but I wouldn't want to prescribe those without significant intervention from a specialist like an anaesthetist. Okay, so we didn't get onto bag valve mask ventilating this patient. Um, have we got a bag valve mask there? Yes. Could you show me the technique how you'd use a bag valve mask? So we'll so remove the 15 litres. Bag valve mask ventilation, we'd pop a bag valve over the nose and make a good seal around the mouth. There is a um, various different techniques. I prefer the C technique, so you form a C with your index finger and thumb, and then you pull uh, with your uh, fourth digits from the angle of the mandible forwards. It's a two-person technique is preferable, so then you can um, get a better seal. Uh, once you become competent, you can try a one-person technique. Okay, and, and how many be, times did you squeeze the bag? You're squeezing the bag, but sort of between 8 and 12, we're averaging about sort of 10 to 12 be, uh, breaths per minute. Mm -hmm. And obviously being careful not to overventilate because you can get barotrauma in these patients. Okay, thank you. Move to the next station.